Phil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and test out our new Sailrite sewing machine by creating a small compass cover. It'll be our first project, well, my first project for sure, and uh, we're just going to create a nice compass cover to keep this protected from the elements, and we'll see if we can't uh, maybe even put the boat logo name, and who knows, maybe we'll, maybe we'll honor the manufacturer as well. As you know, I like to start every project out with a plan. Here I laid out the actual cuts and the folds. It is now time to get my plans and cutting material and utilize the picnic table at the marina for a bit more space. I do all of my measurements and cut out the rectangular piece of material we will need. And now you get the little glimpse of our life. So when you're a liveaboard, your car sort of acts as a storage locker. Ours is no exception. We have the material cut out into a rectangular shape. It is time to start to fold the material like an accordion along the width of the pattern. In this particular case, I'm using this small piece of paper as my pattern and you'll notice I'm getting the width defined and then we'll fold it over and over. The material cut, it's time to bring it all inside. I went ahead now and took a, this accordion shaped material and pinned my pattern to the top of it so I knew exactly where to cut out. In this case, I made this pattern and you can see how below the pattern I have about a four inch space here. It's just because the piece of paper I used wasn't quite the size I needed. But once I've cut the material along that pattern, it's now time to go ahead and remove the pins and ultimately see what we have. Now this should be like paper dolls. Now it's ready for embroidery before sewing. Now that the material has been cut in that paper doll format, I, go, I went ahead and marked the center point of the material where I want the logo and then put it into the hoop with the proper embroidery backing on it. It's now time to attach it to the machine and ultimately start the embroidery sewing process. I then open up the logo file we created on the machine itself and use the machine software to go ahead and adjust the logo and put it right where I wanted it on the material before I start sewing. With the pattern aligned and the correct color thread loaded into the machine, it is now time to go ahead and start actually embroidering the logo. I started with the white thread, which is the background for the Ritchie Manufacturer logo. Here in the background, you can actually see the machine starting to sew that particular portion of the logo. After the white thread finished on the Ritchie logo, we went ahead and switched over to the black thread to start doing the rest of the work we're doing. This particular work includes the black oval you see being stitched now, along with the actual name of the boat, and then the letters and the border that are going to go in the Ritchie logo itself. You'll notice in a moment as the machine finishes up the last stitch, it actually cuts the thread and then moves the embroidery hoop over to its home position. You'll notice in a minute, it's really turned out pretty darn well. I'm very pleased with the way this thing looks. After the embroidery is done, I'll go ahead and flip it over, and you'll notice the round white material on the back of the material here. What that is is the embroidery backing uh, substance, so I went ahead and tore it off um, just around the logo itself. And you'll notice what I'm actually doing here is folding over the hem that we're going to make on the bottom of this so it has a nice finished edge. I'm using something called seam stitch, which is kind of a double-sided tape that Sailrite sells. Now I'm folding this over at three quarters of an inch, and you'll notice in a minute here, after I get one whole um, hem folded over, I'm going to do a secondary hem. So it's got a nice, thick, strong base at the bottom, and the inner piece of material is inside and won't fray. Now that I have the hem held in place with the seam stick, it's time to take it over to the machine and actually sew the first line along the hem. You'll notice just to the edge of my right hand there's that small white bar. I'll put an arrow on the screen to show where it is. But that's the Sailrite Easy Alignment Tool. It's basically a magnetic base, and by putting it down there, almost like a fence of a table saw, it lets you run the material right up along it and keep a nice straight edge. Uh, it worked pretty well. Um, I ran a few test pieces of material first just until I could get the hang of it. So once I get to the end of the seam, I'll go ahead and... Uh, you know, pull the material out from the machine and trim the uh, excess thread off of here. And then in a moment, what we'll do is we'll turn this thing around and we'll run a secondary stitch very, very close to the lower hem so that it has a nice double stitch lo looking line. It'll just make it look a little bit more professional. So now it's time to uh, start that sh uh, second stitch and we'll just um, 
speed this up and run right through it since we already showed it at single speed. With the hem sewn, it's now time to fold each of these sections back onto itself. So essentially you would fold flap number five underneath number four, and you would sew along the curved edge of A. And once you sewn from the tip on the top down to where the A lines meet, you would then fold number four back onto number three, and you would sew along the hemline of B from the top of the curve all the way down. And you'll repeat this process until you ultimately have sewn uh, the A's together, the B's together, the C's together, the D's together, and then you're going to take this thing and form an inside-out circle, essentially, and pin them together and sew the curved line of E up against the other curved line of E. And I apologize now for not having footage of this. I seem to have lost a few of the videos after I recorded them where I was actually explaining this and sewing it each on the machine. So what I'm going to do is show you a sample of how I sewed this when I had my first practice piece I had done. So don't be alarmed if the actual project looks a little different for this particular work than it did for um, the rest of the, uh, the project as you saw it. Um, this one was just uh, me practicing on how to make a domed shape cover. So here's going to be the before and after. There we go. I think it looks pretty good. But I still need to put some little tabs right here. I'll, what I'll do is I'll sew a small piece of webbing on and we'll mount a button right on that side and one on the opposite side of it so it won't potentially blow off in the wind. But the nice thing is it has a nice nice dome top and enough room on the back side for, for this piece right here which is actually um, where the light bulb is to light up the compass. looks good. Deb and I want to thank you for joining us here on Dream Chaser. We really do hope you enjoy these videos, you get something useful out of them, and you like them. If you could do us a giant favor, in the bottom right hand side of the screen there's a small thumbs up right there. Would you please go ahead and click that? Hitting the like button really helps us show up a little higher in the search results. Really, really helpful for us. The other thing we'd ask is if you found any of these videos useful or you think somebody else might find it useful, we'd encourage you to share it on social media or any of the forums that you happen to be part of, whether it's uh, cruising, uh, cruising Outpost or uh, Cruisers Forum, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it happens to be. We'd certainly thank you for doing that as well. So from Deb and I aboard Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, thank you, have a great day, and safe sailing. Bye now.